and it's been a struggle for you to get here. Amen? Amen. Can you agree it was a struggle to get here this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. You wrestle and tussle and everything else. But if you're here, you made it. Amen. If you're here, you overcame. Yes. You didn't give in to the temptation of your flesh to stay home. You overcame. Yes. And that's a good thing. Amen. Hallelujah. That is a great thing. Because the Lord, you have a word for this house. I know he does. It's crying out unto the Lord. What came up in my spirit was, I'm not satisfied. That's it. Look at somebody and say, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Look at somebody and say, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I know you can relate because, you know, you just went through thanks. Given day, uh, some call it Turkey Day, and some of y'all just didn't seem to be satisfied. That's why you got that second plate. That's why you ate the whole turkey what? in the whole pie. No. Come on, you act like you've been starving the whole year because you just didn't seem like you were satisfied. Mm -hmm. Come on, when you're getting a good thing, you know you want more of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, hey, come on. That, that's why you ever brought a, 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 a pint of ice cream and, and you just want to eat a couple spoonful, the next thing you know it's gone? Mm -hmm. Come on, it, it was good, right? Yeah. When it's good to you, you, you just want to keep on eating it. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're trying to put away that little corner. And before you know it, you know, went back in the refrigerator and got that little corner too. That's why y'all ain't got no sweets left in your house right now after Thanksgiving. Y'all done went back and back, fold, back and fold. Man, you got a path to that um, refrigerator because you was not satisfied. But once you get satisfied with something, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't want to ever be satisfied with God. Amen. I always want more. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Hallelujah. When you got something that's real good, you always want more of it. See, some of us just get satisfied for one service. Some of us get satisfied when we read one scripture. Some of us get satisfied because we came into the building. But I want more than just the building. I want more than just to see your face. I want more than just to sit on a cushioned seat. I want more of him. So I'm not satisfied. That's right. Oh, praise God. So today we're going to be talking from the subject, I'm not satisfied. And we're going to be coming out of the book of John. Hallelujah. John, the 20th chapter, verse 22 to start off with. And when you get there, just stand on your feet for the first verse, and then we'll be seated afterwards. Because i got a couple of scriptures to read. And, but we give reverence to the word by standing. Hallelujah. But if you don't, if you can't find it, it's up on the board. Praise God, and then you can search through your book. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand up, young ladies. I know y'all got script. All that energy y'all got. Amen. <laughs> In John the twentieth chapter, verse twenty-two, it's, it reads, "And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You may be seated." Praise God. Now this is Jesus. Go down to verse 23. This is Jesus talking to the disciple. And what happened is Jesus kind of walked up in the room. Now this is after his resurrection. Jesus had died and was in the grave three days. And he got up on the third day. Amen. Uh -huh. And then he goes to his disciples. And the disciples are in a room. And they're, they're locked up in a room because they're afraid for their life. They're afraid that uh, uh, that the Jews and uh, the Sanhedrin, uh, uh, they're going to come and kill them just like they did Jesus. And so they're hiding away, and Jesus just walked into the room. They didn't say he opened up the door. He just walked straight through. I don't care what's blocking. I don't care what's holding. If you want Jesus to come in, he can come through. So he just showed up in the room. And when he showed up in the room, come on, you can't sit still when Jesus show up. You, 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 you just can't be content when Jesus show up in the room. You got to have a level of excitement when Jesus show up. 
Come on. Y'all can like it to a, a mama walking in this room right now. Come on. Y'all know that. Y'all act like y'all wouldn't be excited about y'all president walking up in here. Oh, yeah. Come on. You would be excited because you voted for him. Uh, he's your first black president of the United States. You would be excited about it. Amen. I'm just trying to get you to liken it to something that you can relate to. So when Jesus walked into the room, imagine that. This man was dead, but now he's alive. Amen. Thank you. If you had someone who passed in your life, all of a sudden show up in your house. Ooh, if you don't tear the door down, run it. <laughs> Glory. You will be excited. All right. Oh, come on. Y'all act like y'all all prayed there. Someone walk in the room that been dead for a year. Oh, you about to open up a new door in the house. But you'll be excited. Yes. But if you can overcome your fear, you'll be excited by the fact that there was once dead, but now they're alive. Amen. And so this is the background of it. That Jesus walked into this room, hallelujah, he came through a door that was not even open, showed up in there, and revealed who he was. Amen. And they got excited about it. But then he blew upon them the Holy Ghost. Right. Now, all the disciples was there except for one person, and it was Thomas. Now, y'all know about Don Thomas, right? Y'all done heard Don Thomas for a long time. Y'all done heard that preached a long time. But Thomas ain't got the benefit of the doubt. Because y'all kind of shamed Thomas for the fact that he wanted to touch Jesus. But watch this. He said, whosoever sin you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever who and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Well, watch verse 24. Here Thomas show up. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So in other words, Thomas wasn't in the room. And so in other words, they came out and told that I seen Jesus. He revealed himself. He showed his hand. You can see the nail print in his hand. You can see the thorns on his skull. Hallelujah. You can even see the spirit of Mark in his upside. Mm -hmm. And Thomas said, I don't think so. Verse no. 25, watch this. Because I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> and the other disciples therefore say to them, we have seen the Lord. Right. But he said unto them, except, look at somebody say, except. Except I shall see him, see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nail and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. In other words, I, I, I got to put a spin on this thing. Come and say, I ain't satisfied until I can touch him. Oh, come on. I ain't satisfied until I can see him with my own eyes. I, I, I'm tired of hearing about your miracle. I want to have my own miracle. I'm tired of hearing about somebody else being healed. How about heal me for a change? Come on. Thomas said, I'm going to put a demand on the Lord. I'm putting a demand that he will show up. Oh, come on. You, you can't settle for anything. You got to get the real deal. So I ain't satisfied until I can touch him too. But you know, I, I went a little deeper with this thing. And I realized that Thomas was saying that I heard y'all got the Holy Ghost. It's one thing to see him, but I heard about this power that he was going to give unto us. And I heard he breathing upon you. And I'm supposed to be satisfied that I didn't get this. He said, I'm not satisfied. Because if Jesus showed up and done it for you, he can show it up and do it for me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I thought I had a church in here right about now. Amen. In other words, let me just share this with the men. You ain't anointed until you can win your house. I say you ain't anointed until you can win your house. Why are you content with mess? Why are you content with a messy house? Why are you content with a messy life? In other words, Thomas said, if I get this Holy Ghost power, hallelujah, I have power to cast the devil out of my house. He said, I ain't satisfied until I have the anointing, hallelujah, to clean my house 
up. Why should you be satisfied with a messy house? Why should you be satisfied with a messy life? You should desire more than this. Yes, God. Oh, I'm preaching better. Y'all saying amen. Well, let's go to verse 26. Hallelujah. Watch this. In, in, in uh, uh, John 20, 26. Hallelujah. That got stuck on you again. Praise God. Kick it one time. <laughs> and after eight days again, his disciples were with them. Uh -huh. And Thomas with them. See? Hallelujah. Thomas said, I ain't satisfied, so I'm going to stay around people who got what I want. Oh, Lord. I, I thought somebody would have caught that. Hallelujah. In other words, if you got what I want, I'm going to hang around you. Yes. See, Thomas was the only one that didn't get the Holy Ghost at the time. So he's I'm going to hang around these Holy Ghost folks. Yes. And maybe some of that Holy Ghost will rub off on me. So he hung around the disciple. He said, I ain't going to let nothing separate me. I ain't going to let nothing stop me from hanging around you. Because he said, I don't know when Jesus is going to show up again. Yes. But he seemed to show up when the crowd is there. Okay. He seemed to show up when the rest of the boys are there. <laughs> and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus. See? Mm -hmm. Jesus showed up. Mm -hmm. Thomas could have done like he did the last time. Decided to stay home. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to no prayer service this morning. Hallelujah. So you say, hallelujah. When I called you just morning, God was calling you for a reason. Yes. Right. Come on. But we can always find an excuse not to show up. <laughs> he said, well, I, I, I'm going to hang around this time. I'm going to stay with these boys this time. Because you never know when Jesus is going to show up. Right. He said, there came Jesus and the doors being shut. There you go again. The doors were shut again and Jesus was walking to the house. I don't care what's barring you. I don't care what's holding you back. Jesus got the ability to walk through your situation. Yes, he do. He said he stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. But watch verse 27. Hallelujah. Hear my boy Thomas again. Then say he to Thomas, reach him the thy finger. See, Jesus know what you desire. Because he already told the disciples what? That he said, I ain't going to be happy until I see the prince in his hand. Amen. He said, reach in thy finger and behold my hand. And reach in thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe. So, uh, in other words, I'm going to satisfy your need. Yeah. I'm going to satisfy your hunger. I'm going to satisfy your desire to get closer to me. Right. In other words, Thomas just wanted one more touch from the Lord. How many of y'all want another touch from yes. me? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why you come. You come because you want the Lord to touch you in some area in your life. Yeah. You don't show up to church just because you feel obligated to do so. You show up because you want to be touched by the Lord.
get that say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ooh. Watch this. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. In other words, we got to raise up a standard. Look at somebody say, raise up a standard. Raise up a standard. Peter said, I ain't satisfied following man's standards. I'm more satisfied following God's standards. Because man's standard will change on you. Man's standard will move and the meaning will change. But with God's standard, it's always the same. His standards is above our standards. His ways is above our ways. Once you think you got to the top, there's still no place to go. Yes, God. There's a little higher you can go in the Lord. But he stood before the same. He didn't try. And in this court was these men who was the same one that condemned Jesus. Now, you remember Peter was the one that was outside the court denying that he knew Jesus. But now he find himself in the court. Yeah. Hallelujah. But when you go into court this time, God's going to be on your side. When you come into court this time, God's going to be your lawyer. When you come into court this time, hallelujah, he's going to be your voice. In other words, God's about to raise your stand up a little higher. Yeah. Like he used to. Look at somebody and say, like you used to. Like you used to. You remember there was a time when you used to lift your hands to give him a praise without an invitation. There was a time when you used to raise your hand without someone provoking you. There was a time you used to raise your hand without the preacher telling you to stand up and praise God. There was a time when someone could just say, Jesus, hallelujah, and your hand will go up. When you think on the goodness of God, your hand will go up. Look at somebody and say, just because. Just because. just because of what God had done in my life, I couldn't help but praise him. Just because what God had done in my life, I couldn't help but give him the praise. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. See, God about to bring that back because you ain't satisfied. There was a time, hallelujah, when you were seeking the Lord. There was a time, hallelujah, when you desired the Lord. There was a time when anything will give you a right to praise him. You ain't had to look for no miracle. The miracle was you being saved. Hallelujah, you no longer being that whore you used to be. No longer being that liar you used to be. <laughs> hallelujah. There was a difference in you now. And you will praise God just for the difference. But let me tell you something. Look at it and say, let him tell you something. There's no difference between church folks and sanctified folks. Nowadays they dress alike. And they look alike. They got a split from Genesis to Revelation. Hallelujah. So you can't tell anymore the difference between church folks and sanctified folks. There was a time you could tell the difference. All right, man. All right. But now the sanctified folks look more like the church folks. Oh, it's the church folk. Well, church folk don't mean you say. Right. Doesn't mean you go to church, folks. Oh, well, y'all don't want to talk right there. Because we don't get church out of tradition. We don't get church out of religion. Just because mama brought you there when you was little, you decided to go when you was older. Yeah. Never develop a relationship with God, just with the church. Oh, that didn't go well. I need my, I need my friend to pray for me. Pray for me, Gwen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But watch this. There's no difference between the two. And so therefore, when you don't have a difference, you look the same. You can't witness if you look the same. You can't make no fashion statement looking like everybody else. That didn't work well either. Let's move to my last scripture there. Let's go to Acts the 10th chapter. Praise God. Now I'm almost finished. Praise the Lord. Because I'm not satisfied. Look at your name and say, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. 
satisfied. Here we find in Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 1, it says that there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius and the centurion of the band called the Italian band. All uh, right, uh, watch this. Keep on going. Verse 2. Hallelujah. And a devout man. Look at somebody say he was a devout man. He was a devout, devout man. man. Now, he wasn't a Jew because he was a Roman, right? Uh, Hallelujah. In other words, he was a heathen. In other words, he was brought in by grace. So in other words, he could represent us. Amen. He could represent the church right now. He was a devout man and one that feared God with all his heart. Yeah. Which gave much arms, that's money, that's to the people, and prayed to God always. Watch this, keep on. Verse 3, I like this. If she can keep up. And he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, I know you ain't satisfied. Cornelius, I know you ain't satisfied with church as normal. See, sometimes, hallelujah, we, 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 we get so uh, um, content and complacent with church. Yes. Yeah. We give our tithe. We give our offering. We show up when the door is open. But he said, Cornelius, I know you desire more than just this. This might be good for everybody else, but you desire another level in me. You desire to seek me even more. Thank you. Amen. He said, I'm tired of just being playing church. I want to be the church. Watch what verse 4. Praise God. What happened? Hallelujah. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Hallelujah. In other words, when you truly sat, when you truly not satisfied, you will do more to get God's attention. If it require you to give more, if it require you to serve more, if it require you to pray more, if it require you to worship more, if it require you to praise more, you will do it. Why is it we'll do anything we need to do to get a, a get ahead on our job? We brown nose our supervisor. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. That wasn't the brown nose your supervisor to get ahead, but God tell you to pray a little bit more. You don't want to pray. At least your nose won't be brown. Well, that just went over some of my head. Praise God. Hallelujah. But here, when you're seeking more, when you desire more, you will do more. Amen. But we only do enough. We just want to do enough just to get by. To say we contribute. To say that we gave. To say that we serve. To say that we minister. Jesus. Just enough. But there's more than that. Look at somebody and say, there's more than that. There's more than that. In other words, I don't want to go to church to go to hell. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord, y'all don't want to talk right there. I said, I don't want to go to church to go to hell. In other words, you, we said, how can you go to church and go to hell? Because if you ain't getting the word while you're in church, then you're really going to hell. You're just going through the church. Because the Bible said, when you know to do right and do wrong, it's sin. That is, that is. When you know to do right and don't do it, that's sin. When you hear the word and then you want to activate the word in your life, you're going to hell in the church. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to hell with a bottle of gin. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, Chirac. <laughs> Let me break it up to speed. Hallelujah. Some pineapple Chirac. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Give me a Molly, too. Yeah, my black and miles. Oh, Lord. If I'm going to go to church in hell, I'm going to go to hell through the church. I might as well do what I want to do. And quit pretending like I'm in it. In other words, when you want more, there'll be no more lying. <laughs> when you want more, there'll be no more cheating. There'll be no more stealing. There'll be no more homemongering. There'll be no more backstabbing. Hallelujah. There'll be no more drugs and drugs addiction. Hallelujah. In other words, you'll quit all this cussing and fussing. Okay. Thank you, God. All right. All right. All right. See, 
in, in the Old Testament, the people of God wanted the glory of God, but they couldn't get it because they was in slavery. So God had to bring them out in order for them to fall to the cloud in the fire. Yes. Oh, you know what I'm going at. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, when you're not satisfied, God said, I can't keep you in your bondage. And I expect for you to get my glory. I got to bring you out of bondage so you can receive the glory. Thank you, God. That's why they had a, they had a cloud by day and fire by night. That was the glory of God. But he didn't put them on them while they was in Egypt. He didn't put it on them while they was in slavery. He put it on them when they came out of slavery. God will give you your, his glory when you get delivered. Why are you going to put his glory on you and you're still a drunk? Why are you going to put his glory on you and you're still a liar and a homemaker? Why are you going to put his glory on you when you're still backstabbing folks? I hear my path is coming up in me now. Y'all yeah. don't want to hear me right now. But I want the glory of God to rest on me. Look at somebody. Cause my glory. Cause his glory to rest on you. Don't you want the glory to rest on you? The glory is so much that, that when, Eli, when Moses went into the tent to talk with God, the Bible said when he came out, he had to put a veil on his face. Because it scared the folks. Hallelujah. When you start moving in the realms of God, when you start shifting to your next level, you want to make people uncomfortable. You too holy for me. You too righteous for me. Your standard's too high. Well, baby, I don't want to lower my standard just to please you. They'll talk about you now. But later they'll come searching you for prayer. Yes, God. But they'll never search for you for prayer if you don't hold a standard. They'll never seek you out of their turmoil. Hallelujah. To find peace if you don't have peace. See, Phineas was not satisfied with just church alone. In other words, in that old day, God said, I'm about to restore the first glory. Look at somebody and say the first glory. The first glory. When you first got saved, when you first came into the knowledge of God, there was a zeal inside of you like never before. You couldn't wait to tell somebody about Jesus. You posted on all your account. Every status you had had nothing but Jesus. That was the zeal of the Lord. Every time you opened up your mouth, Jesus came out. You seek him in every place. He said, I'm about to restore that first glory. I'm about to restore that first seal. I'm about to restore that first love. I'm about to restore that first joy. I'm about to restore that first excitement. Oh, somebody got to get this word in here. Because you ain't satisfied in your mess. You ain't satisfied just going through life like this. You keep saying to yourself, it's more than this. It's more than this. It got to be more than this. This is not my portion. I can't please the world and please God at the same time. They're enemy to one another. If you're going to love the one and hate the other, you're going to love the one and despise the other. But you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. God told me to tell someone, sweet things shall turn bitter. And bitter things shall turn sweet. Amen. You can shout right there. Yeah. <laughs> sweet things are going to turn bitter. In other words, the stuff you your sin is like a sweet thing. Oh, come on. It's pleasurable. But God said that's about to turn bitter in your mouth. Yes, yeah, God. The stuff you used to seek for, the stuff you used to earn uh, and desire for, the stuff you, you wanted more than anything else, it's about to start turning bitter yeah. in your mouth. Okay. The next time you pick up that black and mild, it ain't going to taste the same. Okay. The next time you pick up your pineapple syrup, it ain't going to taste the same. Okay. The next time you dial that number, mm. it's going to be disconnected. It ain't going to taste the same. 
Quit trying to hold on to stuff that no longer fit where God is taking you at. And lastly, it's this. I'm not satisfied that my life is spiraling out of control. Yeah. You can't be happy. You can't be stable. When your life is spiraling out of control and you satisfied with this, it got to be more than this. Yes, so I'll give it some quiet. How could we possibly be happy? No, we're going to hell in the handbasket. How could we possibly be happy knowing that everything in our life is turmoil and, and confusion? How can we be happy when you wake up crying and go to bed crying? How could you be happy when your bills are more than what your income is? And you're stressing out and then you're doing stuff that's out of character in order to pay your bills. Yes. How could you be happy? Your life is spiraling out of control. And you need a lifeline. To a drowning man, a snake tail he'll grab hold to. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me right now. Because he opened his rope. Whatever it takes to come out, I'm willing to grab hold to it in order to pull me out of this. See, God is throwing a lifeline to you right now. Through Jesus, he's throwing a lifeline to you. And all thing you got to do is grab hold to it. Thank you, God. If you're not satisfied with the life you're living right now, and you know it could be better than what it is, if you're struggling with the things of this world, and you know it could be better than this, come now. Come to this altar and I'll pray with you.